you trying to get crazy with this scene? Don't you know I'm local? What's up? Every year, people come from all over. People come from Texas, people come from Oklahoma, people come from Japan. They come from all over the world to, to, to experience this. And, and for us uh, that have been active, that there are activists that come from an activist background and, and truly believe in the whole uh, Chicanismo aspect of, 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 of Aslan, uh, to us that's very important because uh, Chicano Park it represents that. It represents resistance against the establishment that has kept us oppressed for so many years. And it represents uh, uh, the fight against the establishment. Welcome to the Lower Left Podcast here at the uh, Lower Left in beautiful San Diego. I'm Johnny B. Good. Uh, with me right here is Bobby. That's Travel me. Gear. Yep. Uh, we got Victor Cordero. And uh, Rigo Reyes, Amigos Car Club. How you doing, man? Thank you I'm for being here. I'm doing good, man. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, so you have a long history here in San Diego, right? Uh, especially in the uh, lowrider community. Uh, community. Um, Amigos is, is worldwide. Everyone knows Amigos Car Club. Um, but as far as yourself growing up, like what was your first like moment that you, you saw a lowrider or, or, or you got that passion for, for lowriding? Well, actually, uh, I grew up during the civil rights movement where uh, the late 60s, early 70s, uh, uh, in particular here in San Diego the, during the Chicano movement. I grew up, I actually grew up in San Isidro. And at San Isidro, what happened to San Isidro is very, very similar to what happened to Logan Heights, meaning that uh, the freeways were coming and you were on the way. Our families were on the way. So at that particular time, it was, it was, there was a lot of organizing. There was a, a lot of community, uh, organizing, a lot of activism was going on. I remember, uh, being in the Civic Center in San Isidro. San Is, uh, the Civic Center was kind of like our, our backyard, if you will, because we lived in the projects. And, uh, when you live in the projects, there's no backyard. So, so it's the, the park, the local park was usually your backyard. And the Civic Center was right, right in, in, in the San Isidro Park. In any case, uh, I remember seeing this, uh, uh, a friend of my brothers. They were three, four years older than I was. And, uh, he was, he, he got there. Yeah, he just got a 1957 Chevy, white. And it was lifted in the front. I had never seen hydraulics prior to that. I was about 12, maybe. I was about 11 or 12. What, what, year, what year was this? Yeah. This must have been about 1969, 1970. 69, probably. Wow. So sure. hydraulics in 1969, oh, yeah. huh? Oh, yeah. Wow. They were experimenting with hydraulics at that particular time. In fact, I remember the guy. The guy was Hector Hector Machado. He's no longer with us. He passed away a few years back. But I remember him parking right there, and, and us, us kids running around the car. Oh, that's a nice car, or whatever. And then he dropped it to the you know, whoa! That that was my first induction into low riding. That really kind of blew my mind. Blew my mind in a sense, and I I fell in love ever since then. As a matter of fact, my first car was a '57. Because of that experience. 57. So you you saw that fifty seven when you were eleven, mm -hmm. and then when did you get your your first ride? It was it was a fifty seven. I was about eighteen. Eighteen. See, yeah. Seventeen. I was seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. Was it like twenty bucks back then? Because how cheap cars <laughs> were. <laughs> now it's like two million. <laughs> actually, I got it for two hundred bucks. There you go. Wow. I got it for two hundred bucks, and actually, it was a four door. It was a four door sedan. Which weren't too popular. Even today, they're not that popular. But at that time, it was pretty much whatever you could get your hands on. That's right. My brothers, my older brothers, both my older brothers are into uh, speed. They're into hot rods, you know. And they have both bought it with the intention of making it a hot rod. But once they saw it was a four door and it was kind of didn't go with a, with a style that they were looking for, they were talking about getting rid of it, you know. And I said, hey, pues presta, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll take it. And uh, and they both told me the same thing. They gave me the same old telenovela, man. They, they told me, hey, I will sell it to you as long as you don't turn into one of those damn lowriders. I said, no problem. Pay them the money. Next day, to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's my car now. <laughs> yeah, it's your car. You do what you want. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I, 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 I say this. Uh, this was back in 74, 75. Uh, at that time, well, I couldn't afford no hydraulics, but, uh, you know, what we, the ways to do back in the day, you just heat the springs, hit the coils, 
and the least risk in the back is hit him and it, down it went. You know, of course you could, you don't have the luxury of coming back up, but uh, it was it was all about being low. You know, was, where, where would you cruise at that time? Like, was there a cruise spot or just well, high that, schools? At that particular time, the most popular the most popular yeah was it was around the neighborhood. Uh, the most popular at that time, believe it or not, it was it was Plaza Tijuana. Mm -hmm. Plaza Tijuana was 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 pretty popular at that time. And at that time too, also uh, Highland Avenue was 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 pretty much kicking, because we were so close to the border. For us, it was it was more to do with uh, with with Tijuana at the very beginning, and then uh, when I first joined my first club, which was the casinos, uh, we started making our appearance over here on this side, like like in, in National City and, and Chicano Park. What what year? Because I, I remember being in junior high school. I think I told you the story yes. before. And, yes. And I thought I seen a casinos jacket, and that was the first club jacket that that I think I had ever seen, or somebody. I must know, have been about seventy four. So casinos, and I think that was like seventy five. Maybe I seen it. Maybe seventy six. But um, from casinos, that's amigos came out of of casinos, right? Correct. Casinos was established in nineteen seventy two. In 1972, and actually, uh, most of the membership at that particular time was from that, from the South Bay, specifically San Isidro. And like I said it before, a lot of the onda back at that time was was hanging out in Tijuana, you know, Nick Teja and, and and some of those popular places back in that time. Many people from this side of the border would go to that border to party or whatever. And and of course, with that came the cruising, which the cruising at that time was players in Tijuana. Uh, when I joined the casinos back in '75, that's when I joined. Uh, we were thinking, we're, they were already thinking about about uh, changing that particular image, hanging out more on this side. Like uh, uh, the Highland was was pretty much kicking, was beginning to kick. It was becoming very popular, and uh, and therefore we started hanging out at, at Highland right, right about that time. That was back in '75, and then uh, a few years after that, uh, a lot of people still identify us as a as a Tijuana Car Club, if you say, because uh, the, some of the members she used to hang out. Oh, there's so much that that they 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 uh, they had that image of being from Tijuana. So at that particular time, we decided, you know what, we're growing the we're do growing the club or whatever, but we need to make a statement. We need to make an image on this side of the border. So we decided to uh, to change the name. Within that, the, by that time we had grown to about 18 members. Not everybody agreed. Not everybody was happy with that decision as far as changing the name. So we lost half of the membership. So when we started, when we started Amigos, we went down to about 10, 10 members. And essentially that's how we started. That's how many people we had when we started Amigos. And this was back in 70, April 18, 1977. Amigos is, is, is it a chapter or originally or Amigos? There was an Amigos in LA too, wasn't there? Correct. Yes. And actually, uh, we stopped meeting as a car club, but we start, uh, we put the plaques down, put it that way. Yeah. We put our colors down at the end of 1976, the beginning of 1977, with that intention of starting forming or developing a new club. Uh, myself, having been part of the Chicano movement, I was looking for for a different name, kind of really a real Chicano name, if you will. At that time, brown this and brown that were pretty popular. There were brown things all over. I mean, <laughs> brown image was was probably the best known. Yeah. But uh, United Browns from Tijuana, classic Browns. Uh, 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 it was, uh, there was a lot of that uh, going on, and uh, I, for one, was looking for something like that. But not everybody agreed with me. So it took us about three months to finally land on the name. I mean, I have a, an original list to this day. I still have an original list of all the names that we considered. Oh, man. I mean, I just <laughs> see that list. It's I, like, that's like trying to figure out what color to, to paint your car. <laughs> it, it's a tough one. Yeah, yeah it, it was tough. Like I said, it was three months of, of back and forth. Yes, we don't like that. No, we yeah. yes, we do. And so on and so forth. We even thought about about bringing up some of the uh, uh, a name of the car that had already died. But uh, that didn't fly either. Este, and then uh, out of the blues, one of our former members who was in the casinos actually had a, a cousin in Los Angeles, which he would come every weekend to, to Los Angeles for parties, family gatherings or whatever. And then uh, uh, I guess he, he be the boyfriend of his cousin este, we used to be with amigos from East LA. And I guess they, they got when I guess he must he must have uh, mentioned it or whatever. And then uh, he... he uh, he sent us a message saying, hey, will you guys be interested in doing the chapter? So he came back. He came back with a name. He came back with a name. And eh, the name sounded, it was lukewarm. 
the name was Segura, but look, Warren put it <laughs> yeah. that way. Uh, put him on the list. So he, we put it, we, again, we put it in the list. The following week, the following week, he went, he, he went again, and this time they sent us a copy, they sent us a, a plaque. Oh, wow. A plaque. And once we saw the plaque, I mean, the minute everybody saw the plaque, it was unanimous. It was on. It was on. This is, hey, this is it. Badass. This is it. And, and I still have that plaque. That's, that's badass, dude. I, me personally, and, and, you know, I have a lot of respect for Amigos because I've known you guys for a real long time and, and we've always been supportive of each other. You guys have always showed, showed love and support for everything that, that we do as tribal over here. And, and I try to do as much as I can to support, you know, the things that you guys are behind. One thing that I know about Rigo besides, you know, not just his low riding um, experience and being in the scene ever since I can remember is, and that's the truth. Like ever since I can remember, like I remember seeing you around and I was a little kid and I, I you know, I, I, I knew you were, but you know, you don't know who I was. I was just some little kid that was trying to figure out the scene. But besides your low riding, I know you've been really um, active. You've been a, a political, you know, Chica in the Chicano movement, um, an activist, uh, I know that you've got some some pretty cool stories. I, I I believe you remember the Brown Berets previously. Correct. And um, where how did you get involved with that? And and who was there a, a a particular speech? Was there something you saw during that time? And we both know that we experienced as Chicanos a, a lot of harassment, a lot of you know we were second class citizens and and living the down south or just being you know Mexicanos, Chicanos, what have you. We were you know, just, just, it was, it was a tough time for us. So how, how would you say you got involved with that and, and what drove you to, to become an activist? Well, first of all, thank you for that knowledge, Bobby. And, and yes, uh, I, I truly agree with you that we've been supportive for, for, for a long time, for many, many years. You've been very supportive of our initiatives and, and we really thank you for it. Uh, for me, like I said at the beginning, I'm a product of the Chicano movement, having, having grown in that particular era. Uh, in 1968, uh, in San Isidro, the small little barrio that I, I, I used to live in, este, uh, there was something that happened there that, that had a big impact on, on Pablo Pablo and everybody that, that lived there. In a sense, because in 1968, a gentleman by the name of Bobby Kennedy was running for president. And, uh, Bobby Kennedy went to San Isidro. And I remember vividly, as the, he was cru they had him cruising on a, on a, on a, I believe it was a 67 convertible Cadillac. <laughs> I myself, I never, I always liked cars, but I never seen a Cadillac. So that was the reason that I went, because yeah. I want to see the Cadillac. Mm -hmm. So anyway, as the, uh, we were kids. I mean, 1968, I was 11 years old. As the, and we went just for the car. I went, I had no clue who this cat was. So in a sense, we're trying to go out there, trying to, I was still trying to touch the, the car, and of course the security, you know, the mm -hmm. secret service, hey, kid, get away, whatever, you know. But the, the fact he was there, the whole family, you know, it was it was kind of like more like a like a festival environment, right inside the city boulevard. And that that's that experience kind of uh, stuck to us. I mean, it was it was it was nice that somebody in, in that or that magnitude went to visit a little neighborhood or whatever. Yeah. And as it turns out, the following day, he was killed. Wow. So, so from here you went to from from San Isidro. My my understanding, I haven't done the research, but I've talked to a lot of people from Logan and 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 they say he also went to Logan Heights. Yeah. And then from Logan Heights, Logan Heights he went to to LA. And LA and that's where he was killed yeah. the following day. So that in itself was about a, a good eye opener. And I said yeah. we, we all say well, we, I saw the guy, you know. Yeah. So that in itself had a big impact on, on my formation. And then in, in 1970, uh, another group of uh, older kids, older than, than we were, I was 12, uh, we overheard them. We overheard, we overheard these kids that were, that were practicing in the neighboring projects where I used to live. What project was of the... Villanueva? The no, this was way before the Villanueva. Yeah. Villanueva wasn't even around. Oh, shit. Yeah, uh, there was actually nothing east of uh, of uh, San Isidro Boulevard, of uh, Byer Boulevard. Uh -huh. I mean, there, there was a little gas station, the, uh, El Motel del Rey, the, uh, all that was on that side. But other than that, that was it. Was the 905 there? Or? No. No? No? Wow. no, that came after. 
that came in the 70s. That came in the 70s. And because that 905, and because the 805, uh, we were pushed out of there, like many families. Same thing mm -hmm. that happened to Logan. You know, uh, you were on the ways, afuera. Yeah. And, and essentially, a lot of those familias, including our family, ended up in Del Sol, and, and that's where I, I grew up the rest of my time. But coming back to that, in 1970, we overheard these older vatos, those older, older kids that were older than we were, and they were organizing about coming to support something in Logan Heights. Uh, we didn't know what it was. I'd never been to Logan Heights. The farthest north I had been probably was Chula Vista, so I had no clue <laughs> where, where Logan Heights was at. My friend did. My friend was Vago, man. He was a Vago and Paz I man. He, he OD on me. Este, and he said, hey, vamos. I said, what? And, and the, and the vehicles, man, vamos. We jump in the bikes. Oh, shit. Myself think it's going to take us 10 minutes to get there. Shit. Pedaling. Yeah. Two, two, two hours later. <laughs> and, then you ain't, and you ain't talking motorcycle. No. You're talking bicycle. We're talking bicycles. From San Isidro to Logan. Yeah. 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 It took us a couple uh, hours. But we landed there. We landed there and, 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 and we got to witness. We got, we were there during the takeover at Chicano Park. Wow. That's Badass. when they were taking, taking Fuck over yeah. Chicano Park when we were kids, man. And, th and that had a big impact in my life. To this day, I'm still involved, you know. Yeah. I like to say, I'm not, I never claim I was from Longan because I'm not. Yeah. I'm from the South Bay. I was being from the South Bay, but it's the, you know, without offending anybody, but I think people such as myself has done probably a lot more for Logan than people right. from Logan has. Yeah. And, 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 and for us, that's very important in a sense because it's the, it's the impact, the fact that we're, the activism. Yeah. You know, I got my schooling organizing. I, I didn't know that, Rigo. I mean, that, I didn't know you were there like that when, when the takeover took it, you know, went down. Um, I didn't know that. That's badass. So since 1970, you've been involved with Chicano Park, the movement, working with people at the park, the committee, you know, and, and, uh, and beyond that is uh, something that I feel real strongly about is is you guys have done Chicano Park Car Show or been the organizer of Chicano Park Car Show, which is known worldwide to be one of the baddest car shows, lowrider car shows in the world. Definitely one of the baddest shows in Southern California. To put that show on for how many years? Going on 40 years. It is no simple task dealing with the challenges uh, and the politics that comes along with not just the dealing with the Chicano Park Steering Committee, which from, you know, I've, I've, I've never, I just, I hear the stories from different people and there's a lot of very strong views and, and some real heavy politics that goes on that you guys have to work with to put the show on. And besides that, organizing a car show that big. And having to deal with all the car club politics and the Llorones and all the the things that, that come along with that, not just prior to the show, during the show, set up, breakdown. You guys, you know, I want to thank you guys just for me personally, because I don't think you guys get enough respect and appreciation and thanks for what you guys do. And people, I think, don't really understand how much work it really is. And not just that is to do it for so so long and the sacrifice you guys ain't there partying and drinking i see you dudes at the show you guys are handling business i've never seen one of you dudes drinking at the show you know everybody wants to go to chicano park day we go to hang out and drink get faded look at cars have a good time and i think there's a lack of appreciation just for that you know i understand people have their problems and they get mixed up in the politics or disagreements what have you, and that's going to happen with any event, with any anything that you do, that people are just going to simply disagree. But I just, you know, that's one of the reasons it was important f for me to get you guys here because I see that. And I don't know how many people actually understand that, how how difficult that task is. You know, I've, I've done some shows way smaller than your, sh than Chicano Park Day, way smaller. And I know how much work that is. So to see you dudes going out there and doing it year after year after year after year, and I hear little bullshit, you know, here and there. I think it's uh, it just people need to recognize, you know. I think people need to show some some appreciation, you know, especially when they go there and they have such a great time year after year after year, because you guys are doing it. Who the fuck else is gonna do it? If there's anybody out there, raise your hand. 
you know, and let's see how many hands really come up. And if they do take it on, they're, they're going to understand the magnitude of what you guys really do and the sacrifice that you make for all of us to have a badass Chicano Park Day. You know? Well, Bobby, I, I, I appreciate your comment and, 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 and you're very right on as far as, uh, spot on as far as, uh, as far as the logistics that it takes. Yeah, it does take, I mean, we, we usually start organizing after the event. The day after the event, we have to start organizing for the following year. And yes, there is, there is a lot. There's a lot of, there's a lot of legwork that happens that people don't see. Most people see it the day of, like you said, like you stated. I mean, people go there, have a party, you know, they, they party out or have a good time or whatever, but have no clue what it takes to get it to that point. Uh, I myself, I'm, I'm the official car show coordinator. So a lot of responsibility falls on my lap, not only with the Chicano Park Staying Committee, but also with the city of San Diego. So I know exactly what you're saying, and yes, it's 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 a challenge. It's a challenge not only dealing with the bureaucracy, because there is a large bureaucracy behind it. Besides all the hurdles the city puts on you, and us, like for example, just last year, uh, the, the last show that we had in, in uh, the 49th anniversary, they raised the 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 insurance limit on us. It used to be one million dollar insurance that we needed to cover. Out of the blues, they said, "No, you need two million." So a two million a two million dollar insurance costs a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, so in essence, I mean, those are just the little details. The that police department and closing the police. The, streets. the police department is a, it's a whole different. You're not really dealing. You're dealing with police department, but you also have to deal with within within the department. They call it special events. Special events have their own department, their own police, and sometimes they don't really communicate special events with a regular PD. Yeah. So even amongst them, they have quote unquote friction, if you will, because they don't, they don't communicate that well or whatever, but not just, not just that, but the, the cost, Yeah. the cost we have to pay for special events. For, we have to pay for cops to go over there and to, to see them go eat tacos and, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and, but, but because it's part of the city regulation. Yeah. So anyway, all these little details, what I'm telling you, it's, 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 uh, it's just minute little items, but the, it's challenges that we have to confront. I, I just don't, I don't see you guys out there. And, and it's cause I think, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, uh, you guys out there, you know, waving your hands going, look at all we did. Look at, look at you guys don't, want, you know, it's, it's, you're not out there trying to get that kind of attention or that kind of credit or that kind of recognition. But I think, um, I recognize it and I'm hoping that people recognize it as well. You know, obviously, like I said, in anything you do, there's going to be disagreements. There's going to be politics. There's going to be people that think it should be done this way or that way, you know, and, and I, I would imagine, you know, like I said before, like they should try to do it, you know, try, try to organize it. And not just that is, is dealing with the other side of it, the Chicano park steering committee and, and all the, the ideas and politics. So you guys are stuck in the middle of some pretty, pretty heavy situations just to, just to put this show together. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> how, how, how did you guys deal with um, the times of political turmoil, like when the Minutemen were going to show up or, you know, the last, you know, Trump administration and all that drama going on? Was there anything mm -hmm. extra that you guys had to do? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, we usually are pretty aware. We have so like a whole team. And, and I want to stress this, this is very important that, that for the Chicano Park State Committee and all of us that put the event together, we're all volunteers. None of us get paid for what we do. Yeah. We're all volunteers. We do it from the quota, you know? And, and again, you said something very important earlier, uh, uh, Bobby, which I, I appreciate that you mentioned it as far as the intention, as far as like the look at me syndrome. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's, that's something that, that's very prevalent in, in, in the sport, if you will. Yeah. One of the things that I always try to stress to, to my club is, 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 is the whole fact of staying humble. Humbleness, you know, is, is, is more appreciated than, than, Happiness. than, than, you know, come look at me, you know, type, type of attitude. And, and we hope that we, we, we confront that, you know, we, we confront that and we want to be sure that, that our membership is, is very sensitive to that. Yeah. Having said that, as, as far as, uh, the, your question, as far as the minimum, yes, uh, we have, uh, the Brumber race and we have a security team that is pretty much on top of everything. As far as you could say, we got our, our own, uh, secret service, if you will. Yeah. And we have to, we have to because we don't know what to expect. 
there's always, you know, uh, most of the time people are more concerned about broncas between barrios or, or broncas between whoever, you know, raza. And they go down. And and they do go down. You 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 know, you can't control that. You know, it's it's, it's part, especially with, with so much alcohol and everything else. Este, but but the whole issue of of uh, of uh, of this uh, uh, white supremacists that 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 uh, sometimes make it a point to go out there and 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 try to get their hurrah moment, you know, in national TV or whatever. Uh, and we 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 got it pretty much to the point that we know already, and 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 we have strategies as far as to how to confront that, and we work very closely with each other as far as to uh, to address it. And again, not to get too many people involved, because the last thing you want is a riot in the heart of the, of the parque. So it's the, we are very uh, sensitive to try to isolate it and, and try to move it away from, uh, from from the main event. Yeah, I've I've witnessed a few um, times where it was, you know, the the threat of violence was occurring, but there was a prevention of it escalating by the brown berets and, mm-hmm. you know, other people involved wearing event shirts. So it works really well instead of, com- you know, confrontation or, th- or intimidation or threats or whatever, you just deescalate the situation and then we can continue having a good time, you know? So. Right, right. And one of the things that, that, that I want to stress is, is again, something that Bobby mentioned earlier, as far as car shows is concerned, I have my own personal issues with 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 car shows in a sense because I feel that uh, the lowrider, as being being a veteran, being one of the pioneers, if you will, uh, um, the lowrider scene has has turned more into that, into the car show scene, and and the whole street venture, the whole cruising aspect of it, has not necessarily been forgotten, but very little attention has been pay, been paid to to that. Everybody struggles more. Everybody kind of like uh, fixes the ramflas more for the car show circuit, and and that's a shame. That's a shame because uh, many of these promoters, not all of them, but many of these promoters are people from the outside. They're not even people from our community. They're making a buck out of you, and not only are they making a buck out of you, but they're they're charging you to make a buck out of you. Yeah. yeah. And not only they're charging you and the expectators or whatever, you know, to go to an average uh, uh, low rider event. You gotta pay twenty five bucks, thirty bucks to get in. And what we try to do here at Chicano Park is offer something to the community completely free. You know, the average Chicanito can't afford to know twenty five bucks to go see Raflas at a super show, or whatever. Right. They get they, they get to go to Chicano Park and, and check it out for free. So here's a trick question. Here we are, twenty twenty one. How we looking, man? Do you think it's gonna go down this year? Is there probably not a chance it's gonna happen in twenty one, right? No, officially it's off. Yeah, officially it's off. We're we're trying to we're trying you to heard get it up. first right here. Yes, uh, we're getting ready and we're we're setting up to do something similar that we did last year, which is more like a, the the week of. Yeah, it's gonna have more educational educational Zoom presentations. Uh, uh, and that way keep it, keep, keep educating our, our people as, as far as, uh, the importance of Chicano Park. You know, few people know or understand, you know, the whole aspect of the takeover of Chicano Park and, and what it really means, not just to our community, but many other communities. If you notice uh, every, every, every year, people come from all over. People come from Texas. People come from Oklahoma. People come from Japan. That's right. They come from all over the world. To, to, to experience this. And, and for us, uh, that have been active, that there are activists that come from an activist background and, and, and truly believe in the whole, uh, Chicanismo aspect of, 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 of Aslan. Uh, to us, that's very important because uh, Chicano Park it represents that. It represents resistance against the establishment that has kept us oppressed for so many years. And it represents, uh, uh, the fight against the establishment. Yeah, and and many people come to celebrate with us. You know, they come from Mexico. The, the Aztec dances. They, every year they come. I mean, it's, the, it's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, it is. It is a beautiful and I've thing, seen, dude. I mean, I think the first time I went was probably the late, maybe late seventies, maybe nineteen eighty. I think I showed a car there first time. I think it was eighty one, eighty two. Um, around that time, I, I had I knew Victor, but I think I think, but. The the thing about it is uh the, the how big it's grown, man. Like we used to be able to just pull the cars up oh, yeah. and you had like all this space between your cars and you could kick back on the grass and throw a blanket and it was it was a completely different vibe, you know. And then now seeing 
you know, some of these pictures in my head of just the street and the park just full of gente. It's a trip, man. It's it just just how how far it's grown. But one other thing I wanted to ask you, um, Rigo, is Japan, bro. I know you, you guys got invited to go to Japan. To that was probably one of the baddest car shows that I've been to. Um, we were we were yeah, there, sir. the Classic mm -hmm. Legend show in Japan, and how the Japanese have embraced Chicanismo low riding and and how they they treat us out there like you know just just giving us so much hospitality what was your experience like in Japan and what do you think of this this the Japanese culture and the way they've embraced well fr frankly uh, uh Bobby uh, uh to tell you I was kind of reluctant yeah uh, even about going to some extent I felt I felt that uh these folks because I didn't know yeah uh, were kind of like trying to steal a culture to some extent. Yeah, I mean, I I, I wasn't able to 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 explain it that way, man. But that was kind of like the feeling prior. Yeah, prior to that. But once once we were out there and 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 experience the experience what we experienced, you're right. I mean, it's the baddest show I've ever been to, yeah, the man. largest show I've ever been to, and the love and respect they have for our culture, truly, truly. Uh, change, change, change my perspective. That's also. right. Yeah, it's, I mean, it was humbling for all of us too. And, yes, and yes, it was. Just the way that the show was put together, and the way that they treated us, and they made sure we were comfortable, and and like they always have. But just, um, what about the cars? What do you think of the builds you saw out there? Like not just low riders, because I, I know you have appreciation for customs and and different types of cars too. What did you think of the quality of cars they were building? I I, I think they they're 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 up to par, man. Right. They're up to par. I, I think I know. I know that for a while, uh, they were they were taking Rafa's from here or already fixed or whatever. Mm -hmm. But now they're 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 developing their own. We we were honored enough to be uh, invited to to some of the shops that they have, you know, and, and they're doing they're doing top quality work. Yeah. And I think Victor could probably speak more more yeah. more in, in the specifics of it as as far as the artwork and so forth. Yeah. But yeah, my, my respects, man. Like like I said, este, este, I, I was very reluctant. One of our hosts. One of our hosts was the communication was a little kind of like uh, basic because he knew very little English and we didn't know shit of Japanese. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they were hosting us. They were trying to make us feel. And, and I was trying to I was trying to poke at them. I said, well, what, what's the attraction? What is it? What is it? And he couldn't explain either. He couldn't he couldn't explain. And then as he was driving, because he was driving in his car on a 47 fleet line. Yeah. And. Ray and myself, my, my camarada Ray and myself were in the back seat and him and his wife on the front and we were trying to have a conversation or whatever. I was, and I was asking him, you know, what is it? What is it? I was trying to get to the nitty gritty. Yeah. You know, what? And he couldn't explain it, but um, he, I looked at his hand as he was driving and he had a, a pachuco cross from, from, from my generation, from my time. Yeah. And then I, I hit him up, hey, what's up with that? You know? Que onda? He said, pachuco Japanese. Yeah. And I said, okay. Yeah. Say no more. Say no more. Yeah. He he know what it meant. Yeah. You know, it wasn't just Oh, that's the thing. They study. They're they study. studious. They'll they'll go as deep as they can. I'm, and they're gonna be listening to this, I'm sure. You know, and they You know, Bobby, it, I think it got us all by surprise. It got me by surprise, but uh, I I was impressed and and shocked to some extent that they probably knew more about me than I know myself. <laughs> yeah. And they you did know? the same thing with the with the build. So um, we're going to start talking to Victor pretty soon, but I know you've built some real badass rides in your time, that 59. Um, you've got a bomb. So what, what cars have you built during your lowrider career? The, the 57 was my first project, was uh -huh. my first project. And and like you stated, yeah, you know, at that particular time in the 70s, particularly the mid 70s, I mean, the cu custom was, was, was still pretty popular. Yeah. I mean, you, you, uh, you didn't want to cruise a, a stock Ramfla. You didn't want to, you don't want to drop a, you know, you didn't want to drop a stock run flat, just leave it stock. So I used to change everything, grills, steering wheels. Uh, that was the whole era of the, of the, the wrought uh, iron grills, uh, right iron grills, it was, it was just, those, those, uh, uh, organ pipes and all that Peluche. stuff. Yeah. Big time. That's, that's <laughs> my, that's my generation. Yeah, yeah. I remember that same, that same time period. And I've told you the story of being in Palm City and in South San Diego. And I believe the dude's name was Freddie Lozano, right? The mm -hmm. guy with the, the 57. It was a nomad or it was a, it was a nomad. It was a nomad. And that was his, uh, you know, he used to come to visit his girlfriend and right there in the neighborhood and he would come up with his homies. And the, those are the dudes that first inspired me to, you know, we were skateboarding around mm -hmm. the neighborhood and I'd see these, these cars. And, and that was kind of, 
you know, you know, you knew the Vato. I didn't really know. No, like, yeah, we, yeah. we actually I went we to used, high school with him. We used to ride motorcycles with him. We would ride from Palm City to Tijuana while they were building the 905. We would go right into TJ, go eat, and ride our motorcycles yeah. back, dirt bikes. Yeah. Right back to the pad. Like like nothing crossing the border. Like it, it wasn't shit. But he had some homies around there. And and you know, of course, we had talked about Tony Chavez. He he was real inspirational too, back from Latin Low Riders back then in the in the mid late seventies, but I, and then the, the Brown image and, and, and clubs like that, that, you know, I'm sure you, you had more connections to with me. I was just a little kid in the street, just tripping out, reading the plaques, looking at the cars, trying to be like listening to the music. What were they wearing? you like, it was, it was a very inspirational time for, for us. And it was everything. Like you said, it was, it was fresh. It was new. And, and these Wattles were, were pioneering it and, and developing these styles that now people are trying to emulate. Like, I'm going to do a car with, you know, <laughs> Supremes or Craigers and Peluche and organ pipes and TV antennas and all the shit from back in the day. And, and, uh, it's just really cool to, to, to be able to have that connection with you. But I wanted to, to talk to Cordero. I, I don't, I've known this dude a real, real long time. I, I, I don't know. Shit, I think he was like, I'm older than him. Don't tell him. But I think he was probably like by a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think he was probably like 15, 16. Um, I think we met through Speedy, Greg Marcus. Yeah, Greg Marcus, yeah. And uh, you know, me being always into you know, Chicanismo and low riding and art, you know, um, mostly back then you'd see a lot of, like I've said several times is more the letters, you know, I always, everybody looking at letters. And then I met Victor and Victor had badass characters, bro. Like, and I still have these drawings. I was going to bring them out so we could look at them during this, but Victor had he would do characters like he would get like El Speedy and it would have Speedy Gonzalez head or he'd do you know in fact I think he never paid me for that drawing no you gave me (laughs) those they were they were like and then he would do like Frank and Joey and me he would do us as characters he would do you know his homeboys as characters like you did Conejo's head and dressed up like a homeboy and, and and they were drawings they were pencil drawings and then you know he would he would do them you know as pen but badass drawings unique style and and the only other person that i met later locally is i think he's your compadre is, is pablo right mm-hmm. oldie oh yeah but victor had 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 style that i hadn't seen before and and characters and shit that i was it, it wasn't necessarily like it didn't have the pinta style but it it definitely had a strong chicano style because of what these characters and these drawings the way that, that they were and and like i said i have a lot of these drawings still and no victor you can't have them back <laughs> but victor has become i mean i got a lot of respect for victor and i've watched him become just a he does a lot of murals he's he's a he's a great muralist here in san diego he does all kinds of different types of of art he's he's a great tattooer um i know that you know he, he's put in the work with uh you know just learning his craft so how did before i met you like who inspired you and and how did you get these characters and this style going like what what kicked it off well um we got rigo here and let's go back to a little bit of his his story um mid 70s i would say i see my first low rider you know i think uh, it was uh, right there in otai um it was a uh, old Vega flaked out green. I, w- I was traumatized when I seen the thing on the floor. To me, it was on the floor. Now I think about it, it really wasn't. But, yeah. But you know, I, and I, 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 for whatever reason, I've always loved cars. It grabbed my attention. It, 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 it dragged me towards that way. Um. Move on a couple of years. I'm in Rigo. We're talking about maybe. Late seventies. I mean, Rio, Rio has a better memory than I do, but he hooked us. He hooked up me and he mentioned Oldie earlier. He hooked us up to do a mural together. And we did at, at the Palm City Team Post, at by team the way. Post, oh, yes, shit, the team go. Post, and uh, you know, 
and, and we started. I started doing some artwork. With, I, I've always loved art. I've always drawn. I've always, I've always did my my style of art until I I I I, I think the Chicano art grabbed my attention. The Chicano movement grabbed my attention. Right. Um, the style of dress, man. I remember the way you used to dress these characters back then, like just the, what they were wearing and definitely the, the Chicanismo that's always been attached to your work, even to this day. I, I think it's rare that I've seen you kind of stray from that, right? Um, I don't know. I guess we each get attracted to, to I could have been a surfer, you know, we get attracted to whatever we want to, yeah. you know, be, but the Raza, the movement, uh, um, Rigo has a big influence in, in, in my life, my upbringing, my art, um, you know, I just just who 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 taught you how to use the airbrush or the the tattoo machines? Or did you have people that that inspired you or or taught you or or mentored you? Um, like I've always loved cars. Um, go back go back to the early eighties when I got my first car striped by uh, Lyle Fisk. He um. He tried my first car. I was I was impressed by his lines, what he did so quick, and and from there I started pinstriping, and 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 little by little I um I I, I always focus my art on cars. Um, I think a car is a piece of art. You can express yourself on a car. Um, but who who besides Fisk? I mean, who did you watch? I know Fisk is is a San Diego. He's an iconic dude. Like that's that's iconic striper. So, um, you know, I know you do pin striping. And did you just watch him, or you just went and bought a dagger brush, or you just went and bought an airbrush, or was there people that that you were? Well, well, back back then I used to go to car shows. I, I used to I used to look at the cars. You know, I, I used to study paint jobs. I used to study artwork on cars. And we didn't have social media back then. Right. So I can Google something. I can, I can um, Instagram something. We had to figure out ourselves, you know. Yeah. How, how was this done? How was that done? So basically, you figured it out yourself. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much self-taught, you know, self-taught. And um, that, 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 that's mistakes, real badass, mistakes and errors. You know? Do you remember your first uh, mural that you did on somebody's ride? I don't want to. I, mean, I, don't, want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I, I can imagine how nervous you were, right? Mm-hmm. Like. I mean, it's it's like getting a tattoo from somebody that's just starting. Yeah, right? well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. You know, you, you you're trying to figure out the art. Um, are there any around still from from back in the day that you've uh, done? Yeah, they're still alive. Yeah, that's <laughs> they're still cool. Alive. Yeah. They're still yeah. around, and you know. And, um, and then tattooing was it the same thing? Like you just you, you got a machine? Did were you watching anybody tattoo? Or because the majority of your time now you spend. More more time tattooing than doing murals, or, or how is your time spent? Mostly? Well, lately, lately it has been. Lately it has been uh, throughout the years. You know, you learn. Um, the internet helps a lot. You know, you learn from different people. You gotta, you, get, you, you can, you never told to learn. Yeah. Um, he's a real humble dude, man. Like this, he, he, he won't he, tell he, you that I, <laughs> I taught myself. He, he's yeah. not, he's not gonna say that. And that takes but, hours of your yeah. life, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and messing up and getting frustrated yeah. and redo, keep keep going. But yeah. but to progress, like the legacy show, you know, a couple of years ago, we got pieces in from all over the place. But Victor did honestly one of my my most heartfelt pieces of the show because Victor's known tribal since day one. Like our first hang tag that we did for tribal. There's a little character. I don't know if you remember this character yeah. mm-hmm. that Victor did. It's a little yes. dude in shorts, and I think he's got chanclas mm-hmm. on. He has like long hair, and he's kind of like a a little, like a, I don't know, like a cholo surfer dude or something. Just something really cool and laid back. And that was Cordero. He he did he did that those characters. So he was one of the artists that I actually worked with first for Tribal, even prior to Carl. Like, even before Carl came in, my brother and I were still doing it. But for Legacy, he, he brought an airbrush piece that it was a beautiful piece. And I didn't, took me a while to really, like, focus in on it. I'm like, holy fuck. Like, he did, 
he did a port a little portrait of Carl as a clown and me as a clown <laughs> and he did a real real bad chick and it was a beautiful piece, man. I, I think um you know, it was it was just real touching to see that he understood the brand enough and, and felt comfortable enough to do that. But I, you know, I'm a fan of his work and if if and and his story, which is it it's hard to get it out of him because he's not he's not that dude. You know what I mean? But um a lot of respect for this guy and and if you want to see his art, your what's your Instagram? Uh Cordero underscore thirty eight. Cordero underscore thirty eight. So that that's he, in, in my opinion, he's he's a San Diego icon. He's been around for a long time, longer than uh than a lot of people out there. <clears throat> the thing about what what I understand about and what I see from amigos is they stay in their pocket for the most part. Like you, they, they're a South Bay and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you know, they're, they're from San Isidro and Del Sol and, and Chula Vista for the most part. Right. And, and well, that, that's, that, that's something that, that, uh, that, uh, few people know right. that, that, uh, yes, that's where the, uh, the majority of us are from the South Bay, but, right. uh, our club over the years has expanded. I mean, we have members all the way to Fallbrook. All right. Escondido. Oh, yeah. Um, Paulino's from up there, right? Well, Paulino belongs to another chapter. Oh, okay. But but as far as San Diego chapter, yeah. as a matter of fact, we've got some of the veteranos that that, that came used to come all the way from Farbrook every yeah. every Friday from Escondido. We had two, three three members from Escondido yeah, I one time. Yeah, some blacks the, up there. Uh, but this that was back in the day or whatever. We had people from Logan. We had people from National City. Yeah. Yeah, our, 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 our epicenter, if you will. Was was really the South Bay, and, and we're still we're still based out of there, but uh, we're not just from there. We're from yeah. over San Diego. Oh, okay. But I, where do you guys have your meetings and gatherings mostly? Are you South all Bay. over? Yeah. Well, mo mostly South Bay. Actually, uh -huh. stay very close to Palm City. That's where we started. Yeah, you know? and I, we actually started at the Palm City Team Post. That's up on the hill, right? On top of By the, hill. the Silver Wing. Because I used to work at the Palm City Team Post, and and uh, I was able to get a, a clubhouse there. Back in oh, badass. that was back in 77, 78. Este, and but unfortunately, everything everything got knocked down. But uh, because of that, because that's where our roots were at, yeah, that's what was still there. What what other clubs were around back when you guys first started? Like, and were there any clubs that, that you guys used to hang out with or inspired you? Or I remember like seeing you guys on Highland in the fuck, it had to be the early 80s with. Back when people were getting, I think it was Raul Robledo and a couple other mm -hmm. dudes buying baby Lincolns right off the lot. Brand taking, new, yeah. Mm -hmm. Brand new, candy in them, hydraulics, wheels, and just, just fucking them all up. Like, just <laughs> going for it. Like, good times on, on Highland. Um, most definitely. The, yeah. the, the, some of the clubs that were around back at the time, obviously, uh, Latin Lowriders and Brown Image was still around. Yeah. They started slowing down like uh, towards the beginning of the uh, early 80s. Uh -huh. But uh, some of the other clubs that were around back at that time were clubs like Corner. Yeah. Co Co Corner was around at that time. Uh, Custom. Uh, City. City was there. Uh, Style. Mm -hmm. Those those are clubs that I now have gone and come back or whatever. One of the things that I want to I want to stress is that uh, throughout my time, at, at least since I started lowering back in 75 or so, 74, 75, <laughs> Believe me, I've seen so many clubs come and go. Some that take off and, and they disappear. And 20, 30, 40 years later, they, you know, either either a nephew or an uncle, I mean, a, a nephew or a son or a grandson or whatever, they, they're getting to it and, and they want to bring up those names back again or whatever. Again, you know, it's it's uh, for us. It's been consistency. One thing about one thing I, I like, I, I do like to brag about amigos yeah. is that is that we have been consistent. We have never broken out. We've always we've always been there since, and you've since been there since day one. Yeah, yeah, I'm one that's, of the founders. Yeah, I'm a co-founder. Badass. That that's um, that's impressive, man. And I, you know, like I said, I have a lot of respect for you, dudes, and only because I, I've I've experienced from not, from the sidelines, and then later on becoming friends with with you guys. And uh, you know, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to come today. I know you both have real busy schedules, and and it, it is real difficult <laughs> getting Victor <Yeah. laughs> to, to say anything. But I really appreciate you coming today, Victor. And then Victor's, like I said, well, he's, I had he's, to back you up, Bobby. You, you know, I I'm appreciate. Not, I'm that. not good at invitations, or I mean, interviews. But 
Hey, to back up Bobby, man. One, one, I appreciate one, that. One really. thing I like to say, and you, you said it right. Yeah, Victor is a humble man, yeah. just like we are, all are, or whatever. Or at least we try to be. Yeah. But he has come a long way. Yeah. He has come a long way. Sure. He comes from the roots. And and one thing about all of us, we don't forget where we come from. That's right. Yeah. I, I appreciate that about that, you guys. That's one thing I want to thank both you guys for is not only like the low rider thing, but actually like living through all the uh, oppression, all the stereotypes, all the dealing with the cops. You know, because I got some of that in the late 90s when I started low riding the, the harassment by the cops, you know, looking down uh, other sectors of the community, looking down on you because you were brown and doing what you love. You know, um, so that took a lot of balls specifically back then because you were dealing with that with you know neighborhood shit and uh and you guys are still here so you know i, I thank, thank you, you guys yeah. for that and also uh you touched on it earlier regarding car shows i don't like doing car shows because i have like adhd where i, I hate being like locked in because once you park like you can't leave <laughs> so i only do those shows where i can park when i want i don't have to show up super early and then i can leave early if i want but yeah. Two shows I do every year, no matter what, and one show isn't going on anymore. It's the big three. It's now a, it's now a dirt lot, you know, and it sucks. Yeah. You know, it, it, it a lot of good memories there. Um, and the other one is Chicano Park Day, you know, and and those two shows are a must. And and I thank you guys for uh, for putting that on for for the world, you know, not just us. Like you mentioned, people from Japan, Australia, Europe, they come specifically for that, and uh, uh, it highlights our our culture. Yeah, you know, highlights us. And, so, and thanks for being the first club, man. Like I said, you guys, uh, that's, I mean, in my opinion, that, that's just who I thought should, should be the first club that, that we wanted to bring onto our show in San Diego. Other cl clubs out there, um, you know, we got our eyes on you and you'll, you'll be getting some invitations soon. But thank you so much, Victor, Rigo. I respect you guys, love you guys. And Same here, brother. thanks for making that time. All right. Thank you. All right. Gracias. All right.